Unfortunately, this leaked audio that is referenced in this segment has not actually surfaced for public consumption. But according to Politico, the definitive Hill outlet here, leaked audio of the Marianne Williamson campaign volunteer staff call reveals a bleak state of her campaign operation. A two hour long Zoom meeting ranged from accusations to therapy. <laughs> This is a short article, so we'll read through it because it's quite funny. Long shot Democratic presidential candidate Marianne Williamson privately warned volunteers that her campaign was desperate for cash and that she did not have the personal funds to keep it going at its current state. I smell bullshit. I think she's got money she could pour in if she wanted to. But she says she wanted to. But I have put my own money in and I don't have the money to continue putting in at the level I have. Williamson said in a Zoom call for a campaign volunteers obtained by the outlet, because I remember, because remember, I'm not making a living while I'm doing this. Remember, I don't need this shit. Uh, a best-selling author. I'm famous, author, damn it. I'm famous, damn it. A best-selling author and spiritual guru, Williamson blamed several factors for the current financial status of her campaign. Among them, she alleged, were the press's focus on internal turmoil and a concerted effort by her political opponents to sabotage her operations. What do you mean the press is focused on your internal turmoil? What about your internal turmoil? Like, maybe blame that, right? Like, what you blame? It's not the, that the media focused on it. It's that you didn't run a good operation. You were, you, you were already on your third campaign manager. Well, it's not, it's not what they're reporting. It's the reporting of right, it. Right, it's the reporting. She agreed with a volunteer on the Zoom who said that DNC insiders and efforts from the Democratic Party are determined to undermine her campaign. Oh, what a brilliant theory that is. That's amazing that you thought of that because it's not like you could have seen that coming a mile away. Williamson said she discussed the theory quite a bit with her campaign manager, Carlos Cardona. It's shocking to us, too, she said. It really makes you wonder. I love this line. I've never seen anything like this, and it does make you wonder, politics is dirty. Oh. You've never said, you've never seen anything like this? I, I'm sorry, this is the exact point that all of us were making from day one, which is that you have every reason to believe that if they need to, they will kneecap you, and yes, they will undermine you from day one. They will mock you, they will dismiss you. In this case, I think they happen to be right. Yes. But even that aside, right, even if you were a great candidate, they'd have done this to you. How can you say, I've never seen anything like this? Where were you in 2016, in 2020? We've done this twice before. I get the sense that a lot of Marianne supporters are very young. They were probably 13, 14 during the first Bernie campaign. So it's not as fresh in their mind what the very recent history is of Democratic uh, higher ups sabotaging, undermining, mocking, ignoring, shutting out, drowning out insurgent campaigns. That was our critique from day one before we knew any of the stuff about her abusing her staff or anything like this. But even when we were saying, hey, yeah, she like at the start of this, I didn't know about any of that shit at the start of this. I'm like, yeah, because I didn't even know she was for Ukraine funding. I just assumed right, that right. she was kind of cool on policy I, at the at right, the right. at the at the outset i was like yeah marianne seems great but she has no chance of winning so it's not a serious effort so people shouldn't waste their time that was at, at that was my kindest assessment of the campaign was is that well this is just too dirty it's not winnable and so it's a waste of time sheep sheep herding people back into this party for this and she's telling her 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 campaign staff of mostly very young people i would think oh, i can't believe that they're doing us like this how how were you taken off guard by that what excuse is there for that? Um, well, is she really taken off guard? Because based on all of the reporting that we've looked at, this is a very manipulative, mentally unstable woman with cult leader tendencies. And, um, you know, she's giving them a line, right? I mean, this is how you keep people involved, right? It's us against them. They're coming after us. They're not coming at, they're coming after RFK. And Cornell much harder than you. You're a joke. You're a joke. Right. Like they're not, they're not bothering with you. You're not challenging the narrative in any way. You're just, you're just, you know, a cocktail lib who's playing candidate. They don't, you know, once in a while they have you on as a joke. They have you on for a laugh. Nobody's ganging up on you. You, you have thirty years of reporting on her being a terrible manager 
of her not being able to retain staff on people who only know her through her writing and her speeches, who get close to her being extremely disillusioned and embittered by the experience. Uh, variations of the statement, don't meet your heroes, pop up again and again in reporting on Mary Ann when they ask people who have dealt with her what they're coming away with, including her staff who came out last week saying, I, you know, she, uh, she took me for a ride, basically. I'm embarrassed. I thought I was sharper than that. He said, right. I'm paraphrasing, but he said something to that effect. Um, and yeah, I mean, now the grift is, uh, it looks coming to an end, unless she wants to keep dumping money into it. What kind of idiot is going to give money to this fucking person? You have to feel sorry for the people who got sucked into this. Um, and I, I get the impression a lot of them do through her books. She gets a lot of people through her books. Like they expect her to be that person. And then, you know, the, before they know it, they're ducking a Nokia. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'll keep reading here. This, this is a funny part, too. At another point in the call, Williamson said she believed that the DNC, Biden, whomever, were working to stunt her popularity on TikTok, where she has <laughs> millions of viewers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're keeping them up nights, Maria. Yeah, right. With your TikTok, which we covered this way back when this news started. She's not doing that well on TikTok. I think her, her TikTok videos were averaging 175,000 views a piece, which is not that much on TikTok. Not, a, not really on not TikTok. No. No. I mean, you just get the way the app is designed. It's not like YouTube where you really got to find your audience, man. You just drop shit on there. And people are watching it. Right, exactly. The DNC and Biden did not respond to a request for comment. Yeah, that does not surprise me. The purpose of the Zoom meeting was to... Marianne who? Yeah, right, what? <laughs> was to revive morale with a Q&A session. Running? Yeah, right. <laughs> with Williamson that went on for about two hours. When it comes to finance, we're an insurgent campaign. We don't have celebrity relatives that are throwing money at us or super PACs. We're going to focus on, just like Bernie Sanders did in the last election, those $27 donations, Cardona, Williamson's campaign manager, said in an in-person interview on Thursday. It's going to be a people's campaign, and people's campaigns <laughs> aren't always well this. What people? You got what no people. people. What people? Yeah, no. Mar Mar Marianne screams salt of the earth. Uh, grapes of wrath, working class, uh, scion of the soil. I should have had the Babu Bot uh, sound drop ready from Seinfeld, the guy who redesigns the cafe on Jerry's oh, yeah, advice. Yeah. You said there would be people. What people? Yeah. There are no people. <laughs> Show me you are, people. You are a very bad man. Yeah, very bad man. That's right, exactly. Williamson is running a progressive primary campaign against President Biden, but she has experienced consistent staff turnover and is struggling to fundraise. Most recently, the campaign lost more than six staffers in one week, including former field director who took to social media to accuse the Williamson campaign of being more of a book tour than a run for office. That gives the final bit of legitimacy to that story, although we were pretty sure we had it right at the time but there you have it politico confirming it williamson dismissed that allegation on the zoom call noting that other candidates who run for office also release books i love this part she explained that the book coming out in september titled the mystic jesus the mind of love <laughs> is one that she was contracted from her publisher ahead of her 2020 campaign instead of writing that during her first presidential run she I, negotiated I thought, I thought her neck her next book was i fucked carlos castaneda in the desert yeah right, exactly no? remember the, i guess that's the that's the, the mystic the mystic jesus yeah the mind of love instead of writing that during her first presidential run she negotiated publishing her book a politics of love a handbook for a new american revolution instead she said her political book didn't sell well and added that she only gets 50 cents per book. Now, I just want to take a little bit of a game break here because this goes back to the segment we did with CJ last week about, you know, the uh, former field director basically accusing her of running a book tour disguised as a campaign, right? Okay, what this exposes to me, and this is a pattern here when it comes to not just Marianne, but the people propping up her campaign and in independent media, Crystal Kyle, right? You wouldn't invite 
Marianne to officiate your wedding if you didn't know that she was a doomed candidate because if ever she became a serious candidate people would point to the fact that she officiated your wedding and say that's a conflict of interest right. the reason right. you had her do it anyway is because you know there's never going to be a conflict of interest because she's never going to get close enough for anybody to look that closely at it right what does it say that she has a book coming out in September of 2023 which is the time you would really have to start catching fire after labor day that's when bernie surged right. in the polls right. october right. 2019 to make that run for the nomination like if you're going to catch fire that's when you have to do it so according to plan if you really thought you had a chance to win this thing you know that okay come the early fall of 2023 is when i'm gonna surge right, right. i'm gonna get right. a grassroots team together donations are gonna start coming in and then you really think it's a good idea to drop in the middle of this supposed surge a book called the mystic jesus <laughs> like <laughs> the fact that that book was scheduled yeah. for that release date is evidence to me that you knew your campaign was never going to catch on because you would not want a book like that coming out in the middle of a growing primary campaign right it makes a lot more sense that she thought she would generate interest in this book through the campaign than right. that she thought that exactly like I, who because knows? it looks like at this rate the campaign's going to be over by then i which that that will be my first prediction of the year come come to fruition i, act, right. I actually said about two months ago that that campaign would wrap up in the next two months when she when she lost um peter dow and the other guy uh what, what's his name jason call jason call yeah when she lost those guys in the same week i said she's going to be out in two months but we'll right. see. We'll see. I mean, look, in the end, it sounds like I don't know if you're going to the other article, but it looks like uh, unless she dumps more money in, she's done because, exactly. they're, you know, they're trying to put a brave face. Oh, we're going to double fundraising. No, you're fucking not. Nobody's giving no, her they money. Can't. Nobody's no. going to give her money. It's going to go the other way at this point. Once maybe, these maybe, start coming maybe out, Crystal. that's it. Maybe yeah, exactly. straight up Crystal. <laughs> One supporter on the call suggested, I love this that she could quiet the critics who said she was merely trying to turn a profit by making her book free for a week. <laughs> Williamson best. bristled at the idea. <laughs> it's called a library. <laughs> she responds, <laughs> it's called a library. Ah, that's the Marianne we've heard so yeah, much about. Yeah, exactly. That checks out. These stories are beginning to check out. Hey, maybe we should uh, you know, make it look like we're not profiteering so much by making the book free for the first week. It's called a library. <laughs> they want it for free to get Ever heard of it, motherfucker? Ever heard of a fucking library? Elsewhere on the call, Williamson staffer Wendy Zaller, who has managed her past book tours, defended her. I've actually run a number of Marianne's book tours. This is nothing like a book tour, Zoller told the volunteers. Well, I had it's to not sort a of fucking laugh. book tour yet. Yeah, it's right. The it's the not... fake presidential campaign <laughs> leading into the book tour, idiot. Exactly. <laughs> I had to sort of laugh when I saw the allegations that she's just trying to run a book tour. Nothing could be further from a book tour than what goes on here. While I was laughing, I was also very pained. It was very painful to me to see what's said about Marianne because I know it's not true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so time and again during the two-hour call, Williamson returned to the dire financial state of her campaign, to which she already loaned $100,000 in 2023, according to a financial disclosure from the first quarter of this year. She was questioned several times about turning to her old celebrity connections, but said she would not reach out to Oprah Winfrey. Oprah will let me know if ever she's interested, she explained. Why would Oprah Winfrey attach herself to your campaign? Like, yeah. why? Why? Say, say like, the delusion of these people Oprah. is just amazing. Yeah, say what you will. She's a shrewd woman. She picks winners. She's Oprah. Right. She's right. Oprah. Right. Williamson did say she had emailed actress Laura Dern, her former roommate, and had not gotten a reply. <laughs> At another point in the call, she said that even former presidential candidate Andrew Yang has reneged on an offer to stump for her in South Carolina. Yang told Politico, no, that's not correct. Thanks for checking. Man, this is brutal. This is brutal. I almost feel a little bad for her. I mean, this is a public humiliation. After the publication of this article, Yang then tweeted that he would campaign with Williamson in the early well, states. Well, because he's not going to have to. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah. The negative press has made me radioactive to some people, Williamson said. I mean, it's not the negative press. It's 
It's the reality. It's the reality. It's because the reality confirms what the press is saying about you. Why are all these people fleeing your campaign? Right. It's not like it's in your it's not like it's in the past and you've changed. It's you've you're on your third campaign manager. You've had almost a dozen staff members quit right. in the past couple of weeks. The last guy just went off on you on social media at great personal risk to himself because right. you're notorious for coming after people who criticize you in public, which is why he took the post down a few minutes. It seems like right. after he put it up, not, not um, soon enough, not soon enough. She said a recent fundraiser in Chicago where tickets sold for $350 yielded nearly 20 grand, but $250 tickets for an upcoming event in LA weren't selling. <sighs> in who, another exchange, who would, who would pay $350? Yeah, who would do it? Like, this is what, this where is is what I mean. Is she finding anybody who would do that? There is no primary. There is no primary. This goes for RFK as well, by the way who gets mentioned in this article. In another exchange, she called fellow Democratic primary challenger Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who announced that he raised $6 million in his first financial disclosure, the bright, new, shiny object. This cycle, everybody's throwing money at Bobby. Well, RFK, for all his faults, is presenting a sort of alternative to Biden, and that's why he's getting a lot of grassroots support. Whereas you, on the biggest issue of the day, Ukraine, seem pretty much in lockstep with Biden, and on these domestic issues, we've all seen, we've all gotten that runaround in the past. So there's just no, there, there's no lane for her, and there's there's no there's no oxygen in any of this. And you know, to the extent that RFK put up six million, I just said earlier in the show, Joe Biden has seventy five million in the war chest now, seventy five right. million. Right. So what are we talking yeah. about? Even six exactly. million. I mean, what exactly. the fuck are you talking about? And and you know, I don't I don't hear about a campaign manager quitting RFK's campaign weekly. <laughs> right. Yeah. I still got, you know, the, the, pre the, the press is not, they're not fans of RFK in case you hadn't noticed if yeah, that was yeah. happening. They'd be all over it. Right. That's only happening in your campaign specifically. And that connects to decades of reporting about your, I hesitate to use the term management style to use a kind term for the way people describe what Marianne does when the cameras are off to our people. Exactly. Exactly. And just a couple of hours after that story broke, Politico ran another headline with the title, Marianne Williamson campaign is in deep debt. The takeaway here, Williamson's campaign reported about $270,000 in unpaid debts, according to financial reports filed Saturday. That was more than twice the hundred and five thousand dollars it reported in cash. Yeah, so on ven it. vendors are getting burned. It sounds like vendors getting burned. So you know, there you go. I mean, look, hundred and five grand to RFK six million, RFK six million to Joe Biden seventy five million. What it's yeah. looking like here is what out there in the world of people who are not online every day, who are not thinking about this as often as we do and we love everybody who thinks about it as much as we do because that's why we have a show so we love you guys but it's important not to get the it, it's important to keep things in perspective the country is not as online as all of us are and right. out there in america there's really not much of a primary going on you have right. joe biden racking up corporate donations building up a war chest for the general election season against DeSantis or Trump, both of whom are raising a decent amount of money on their own, that money will eventually consolidate, and you're going to have a very, very expensive election between two major party candidates who are yeah. the party favorites of the big money interests that fund them. That's what this is shaping up to be. That's why I'm inclined to support the Cornell West campaign, because it provides an alternative to that. There is nothing right. exciting happening in the primary right now. All of the action for the people who do not want to be absorbed into the duopoly is on the third party side. There is no other action in this election cycle. Sometimes we see people who say, I'm not going to donate. I'm not going to work for them, but I will vote for them in the primary. I think it's very unlikely that these people are going to be on your ballot in most states, if any. If they are, sure, man. You know, it's a, we have a thing in New York. It's a funny thing. I don't know who came up with this. It's some mad scientist, some Nazi they brought over with Operation Paperclip or something. <laughs> but on the on the streetlights on the corners in New York, 
there are buttons that tell you if you push them, they'll change the light. But they don't. They do absolutely nothing. There, it's, 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 I know it sounds crazy, but I'm not kidding. There are these buttons, and they, they do nothing. For the walk, push, don't walk, you mean? Put, yeah, yeah, push here to change the light, and you put, it does nothing. It's purely a placebo. So I'm saying, right. like, Werner von Braun came up with this fucking idea. <laughs> uh, but, but, but they have them there. If you want to go push the button to change the light, go ahead. Vote for whoever's on your primary ballot on Election Day. Me, I, in situations like that, where the vote is completely meaningless... I write in characters from my favorite franchises. I have voted for Paul Atreides and the Baron Harkonnen. Um, I have voted for Harvey Dent for Attorney General. So that's what I'll usually do. But if if you feel better actually voting for RFK or Marianne, like I said, I, I highly doubt you're going to get the chance to even do that. I don't think they'll make it far enough to be on the ballot in 99% of states. Yeah, if you they, have if, to get a lot of signatures turned in in order to get your name printed on those. Marianne, I, I'm saying there's no way she makes New Hampshire. Forget about it. Well, now it's South Carolina, right? She won't make South Carolina. RFK, I mean, he might. He might, but not much more than that. Please clap.